ripples create waves. And actions create impact. In order to live an impactful life, we need to create ripples today, not tomorrow. You know, procrastination and impact do not go well together. The catch is, in order to stop procrastination, we have to overcome one of humans' biggest fears. It is the fear of failing. 90% of humans die with regrets. Biggest regret? Not taking enough risks. In a room like this with 100 people, only 10 of you die without regrets. You die, but no regrets. Let's change that. I'm here today to share with you my simple recipe on how to cope with the fear of failing. I'm talking about ripples and waves, but the place where I learned this life-changing lesson was in the middle of the Nubian desert, in a country that is under Sharia law, 30 years of economic embargo, third world country, led by a military regime, terrorist headlines, and even kidnapping of Swiss women. The country I'm talking about, some of you might have guessed, the Republic of Sudan. I went there on a mission with my nonprofit that I co-founded. UNESCO had picked our project out of 800 competing projects worldwide to create with us a first of its kind culture festival in Sudan. The festival was supposed to happen in this really beautiful but deserted village called Karma Kul. I will now take you on a journey down the River Nile, right into Karma Kul, where it all happened. So here's Lausanne now, Sudan. It's September 2017. I arrive in Karmakul. I'm very excited to get started. I unpack my bags and um, really head over to the head office to meet the local team. After a long day of meetings and discussions, I already feel drained and a bit disillusioned. The locals really love, love the idea of our festival, but they have a bet going on how soon the government's going to stop us and also on how soon we're going to give up. Sometimes you have to ignore red flags, so that's what we do. We just ignore it, but I'm glad I didn't know what was ahead of us. It's only three months to go until the festival. We invite the youth from all over the country to come and help us. But who wants to help with a festival that's labeled Mission Impossible? We expected around 20 applicants. A day later, I have 253 applications in my email box. And you know why? Because the festival inspired them to have hope again. So I read through all those messages especially the ones where we asked them about their motivation. And those messages really touched my heart. They were full of hope, but also desperate. I knew these messages are the essence of our festival. So I copy-paste them, put them into a separate document, and named that document the Voices of the Youth of Sudan. The inspired youth also inspired the local craftsmen to believe in the festival and to start the groundwork. We needed toilets, accommodation, we needed Wi-Fi, we needed parking spaces, and so on. It's only two months to go until the opening of the festival, and I get a phone call. 
from the government. Oh, nice. I'm sure they want to offer their help. But I forget that I'm in Sudan, not in Switzerland. So I pick up, and the man on the other end says, you will get no permit for this festival. You have to take down all your social media. Otherwise, there will be severe consequences. Severe consequences. I didn't sign up for that. No, I go back to my room and I frantically pack my bags again. I'm out of here, I want to go back to my secure Switzerland. Then I remember. Inhale, exhale. Some yoga teachers in the room, maybe. Until a voice pops up and says, Birgit, you really want to give up because of fear. You learned nothing from 10 years of coaching. Okay, now I'm not leaving, I stop packing. Instead, I join my team, and together, as a response to what the government said, we launch a spectacular social media campaign, like with this cutie here. The campaign goes viral. A few days later, to our surprise, random people start to show up. They come by foot, by truck, even by camel. They come to Karmakul to join forces with us to pull through with this festival. At that moment, we named the festival Open Sudan as a call for action to the government to loosen its grip with its population. The campaign also puts the festival on the agenda of the big multinational NGOs in Khartoum. So the UNDP, the UNHCR, the UNICEF, and so on. They all want to join and support us. Embassies, the culture centers, and even the private sector. On a very hot afternoon, I'm testing the tents that we bought, because I love camping and I insisted on those tents. I get another phone call. It's the government again. Oof, I really don't want to pick up that phone, but I do. Secret Service Police is on your way to Kramakul right now. We have arrest warrants on, on your core team members. Stop the festival now. Boom. My heart drops and I turn to my team and they're shaking because they know what their oppressive government is capable of doing. Fear is in the room. Half of the team leaves. We're only like a small group left. And I desperately try to come up with something that keeps us going. And that's when I remember the voices of the youth of Sudan. I go and grab that document and I read out loud to the team, and I want to share a few of those messages with you. The festival makes me feel alive again. With this festival, the Sudanese children can begin to love their Sudan again. I want to show the world that we are not different. Sudan is not that terrorist country. Thank you for giving us this chance. There's silence in the room. Until Alia, my friend, she jumps up and she says, we will not fail the youth. We cannot give them hope and just take hope away again. We all agree. We all jump up and we agree. If the government stops us forcefully, that's one thing. But it's not going to be us to stop the festival out of fear. So together we decide we're going to continue. And now it's only two days to go until the festival. I'm getting ready to sleep, but I'm so excited. The artists have arrived from Europe and even from the US. Are we really going to make this impossible thing possible? Wow. And my phone rings. It's not the government. 
It's the Swiss ambassador. And he says, Birgit, the Minister of Culture demands an immediate crisis meeting tomorrow morning in Khartoum. The Minister of Culture, the very guy who has arrest warrants on our team, who is a direct report for, for the dictator Bashir himself, and he is internationally indicted for a crime on humanity, and we need to go now to their office? I'm freaking out. But there's no time to freak out. We need to jump into the car and drive into the desert. At a gas station, the Nubian desert, the stillness of the desert, calms down my mind a bit. And I have an epiphany. I realize, since 2016, we have sent ripples after ripples. And those ripples now have formed into a wave, a wave that's actually bigger than we thought it would be, and actually out of control, but has a huge impact on people's lives. When we handed in the application for UNESCO, Ripple. When we invited the youth, Ripple. When we launched a social media campaign, Ripple. The NGOs joined Ripple, Ripple, Ripple. It's like a black belt in Ripple persistence. The next morning, we barely make it on time. The minister is angry. He feels cornered because the big multinational NGOs published the opening of the festival. That means if he wants to shut it down, that's what he wants to do, he will be the bad guy. So he has to grant us to do the festival. After long negotiation in Arabic, I don't understand a word, just the tension, he agrees under the condition that the Swiss ambassador guarantees that we comply to the Sharia law during the festival, huge responsibility. Thank you, this ambassador. We jump into the car, drive back to our beloved Karmakul. There, we build a bigger stage. And the very next day, we officially open the first Karmakul festival with a crowd of 30,000 people and 30,000 tears in our eyes from joy. So back in Lausanne. We knew the festival was a huge milestone for Sudan, but we had no idea what happened next. The very Karma Cool crew was the decisive initiator for the big revolution in Sudan in 2019. So because they knew from the festival it's possible to stand up, they had the courage to go with the revolution. They used the same microphones, the same stage, the same way for do it, doing its impact. It blows my mind to think what would have happened if we would have procrastinated on doing those ripples, on doing the festival. What if fear would have been our guide? The Sudanese revolution would have taken a different turn. And now I have a very special announcement to make. Tonight here in Lausanne, it's like a world premiere for us. It's the first time that we share this true story of Karma Cool publicly. It wouldn't have been possible under the old regime before the revolution it was too dangerous. So in the name of the Sudanese people, thank you for being our audience. Goes on. The festival had a huge impact on my life as well. Back in Switzerland, I applied what I learned about coping with the fear of failing. It helped me to pull off two really large projects and probably also helped me to get the award of the top 100 women in business. So now, here comes the key ingredients to cope with the fear of failing and ultimately live an impactful life. Ingredient number one, focus on the ripples and not on the waves. First, make ripples. You see, if we start focusing on the huge impact that we want to have, we will be scared 
and chances are we procrastinate. We had no idea in 2016 that our little festival would have an influence on the Sudanese revolution. So just do your ripples. Make sure they go into the right direction. You don't even have to jump into this dark, scary, deep end. You can sit on shore and do your ripples. Second ingredient, inspire others to join you. They will inspire you back. And then it becomes very powerful. Like the festival inspired the youth. The youth inspired us to continue. They inspired the NGOs. And then the festival again inspired the uprising people to do the revolution. And number three, be persistent. Waves don't form overnight. But when they do, they roll and roll. The wave didn't stop with the revolution 2019. The wave brought me here to you tonight to share this story and to have also an impact on a few of you, I'm sure. And that's why now it's your turn. Which of those three ingredients will you apply to create your first ripple tonight? Because there's no time but now. Thank you. <laughs>